we are today is a place called Terek Terek National Park. Now if you watch other videos that I've done, you'll know that I live in a place called Kahuna in North Central Victoria in Australia. And where we live is dead flat place. It's, uh, you can see for a long way. If you get you know, a few metres in the air, you can see a long, long way. So there's two places that I like to go to take photos, generally, like astro photos or just wildlife photos. And that's one of them is here at Terek Terek National Park. The other is Mount Hope, and we'll go there in another video. But today we're at Terex, and uh, Terex is about, uh, about half an hour just south of Kahuna. You come past Mount Hope, which I'll take you to in another video. And uh, out there, we've got uh, Pyramid Hill, which we'll go to in another one. So, why are we up here? I come up here all the time, or often enough, for uh, any sort of photography. I do a lot of astrophotography work here. I do some wildlife photography work here. Since this morning, just this morning, I've seen a heap of kangaroos. I've seen a couple of wedge-tailed eagles. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty pretty magical spot up here. And the main reason I came up here this, this morning is that uh, I'm sick of being at home on the farm. We've got to get out and explore some places. So I brought you to one of my favourite places to, to photograph things. So what we're going to do today is a bit of macro photography. And if you don't know what macro photography is, it's when you take something small and make it look larger. You see lots of photos of insects and things like that. I'll throw a few photos up here now. And all these photos that I'm showing you now, I've taken with the iPhone. Now, do you need to have an external lens to put onto your phone? So Moment make macro lenses. I think Sandmark make them. You can buy a plethora of these uh, external lenses, macro lenses on eBay and many other photography sort of websites. But do you need it? Um, they can be expensive, like the Moment one is quite expensive, but it is really good lens from all the reviews that you see online. But can you do it without that lens? I'm gonna tell you, you can. All those photos I've just shown you are taken on the iPhone as far back as my iPhone 6, which is using an app. So we'll get into that app and I'll show you what it's all about right after this. G'day guys, I'm Shane Mostyn. If you're into mobile photography and you'd like to learn about mobile photography, this is the channel for you. Each week I put out two new videos, so subscribe to the channel and you'll see something new every week. Everybody has a phone. Most people have a phone and most of those people will take some sort of an image on those phones. Even photographers, I'll go to weddings and shoot weddings, but I'll still pull out the phone occasionally and quick get a quick photo without changing lenses and stuff, um, just to get, capture something so that these guys can use on uh, social media and stuff. But when it comes to things like astrophotography, photographing the moon, I'll put a link up here to uh, what I shot last week, um, and doing things like macro photography, even with the best cameras that you've got out now on the phones, um, you'll always get something better with a proper camera. Uh, you'll also get something better if you put an external lens on it. So the moon photography, for example, you'll get a much better photo with that if you put an external lens onto it. But I'm all about keeping things on the cheap for you. So let's get into something else that we can do with macro photography without using a lens. So if you've got an iPhone 11 Pro, you've got those three lenses on that. You've got the wide angle lens, the ultra wide angle lens, and a telephoto lens. And with that telephoto lens, you can use that to do macro photography and it'll get you reasonably close, but it won't necessarily get you a great macro photo. So we can certainly do something better than that with an app. So what we're gonna talk about is this app called Camera 2 Plus. And what this app does, um, it gives your phone a lot more manual functionality. And, and I've reviewed a few different apps that do this sort of thing, but this one does macro photography better than anything else that I've seen so far without a lens. So we'll open up this. Um, in landscape mode here, on the far left-hand corner where it's got macro there, if you touch that, it'll give you all the options that this app will do. And, and they're pretty extensive. You can do some pretty cool things. And I'm actually gonna try this with astrophotography once the full moon uh, goes away within a week or two. Um, but we're going into macro photography. And up the top here, you've got a slider and that will zoom in. Um, on the right-hand side, you've got your exposure compensation. You can make things darker or lighter. And we'll talk about that more in a little bit. But on the shutter button there, there's a plus symbol. So if we hit that plus symbol, I've got the burst mode on there, and that's really important for macro photography, and I'll explain why in just a sec. You've got normal mode, shooting mode, and we're gonna turn the stabilizer on or off, um, depending on if you're going to shoot those burst modes. But we are gonna shoot burst mode, so we'll get into that right now. So when it comes to shooting macro, um, the focal plane that you're shooting on is really narrow. So when you're shooting the camera regularly uh, on the native camera app, just shooting regular photos, and you touch on someone's face, for example, that you're taking a photo of them, it will focus on the face. 
If you're using that uh, portrait mode, it'll tend to blur the background through the software that it has. But if you're not in portrait mode, you'll have a long area, as in a depth of field, that is all in focus. And that's just the way those cameras work. But with macro photography, your focal plane is really narrow. And when you've got something that's really narrow and you're shooting something that's really small, it's very, very easy to get them out of focus. So what we do with the Camera Plus 2 app is that we go into burst mode and we fire that camera as we move away or forward to the subject. It's pretty close. We're talking about a few inches here away from the subject. And once you finish shooting that photo, that burst of photos, go into the light box there. So you hit that button down the bottom there, go into the light box, see all the photos, and there's the burst that we just took there. If we hit the, uh, if we hit the zoom button there, you can see all those photos that we just took. And we can go on the zoom button again and see, well, there you go, that one there is nicely in focus. We'll go across here. That one's a bit blurry, you can see there. So we'll keep this one here and we will save it. That's it. So what sort of things can we actually photograph with this? Heaps. If you're out in the garden or you're out in the bush, flowers, trees, the bark on trees, all those textures, the moss on rocks, all those sorts of things are really, really interesting to photograph when you're shooting macro. When you're at home, you can do all sorts of things as well. You can go and photograph money, keys, coins, jewellery, all that sort of stuff, and it's really interesting sort of work for macro photography. And once you start doing it, you'll be surprised about how many things you can take a photo of, and you think, well, I never thought of taking a photo of that before, but all of a sudden it's interesting to take that photo. There are a few things that you need to be mindful of when you're doing macro photography. The first one is light. Light is really important for macro photography, probably more than any other sort of photography. It's, it's, uh, photography is essentially catching light, but with macro stuff, you're really close to it, so you've got to be mindful of where your shadow's sitting. Um, if it's outdoors, the, the bright sunlight. If you're indoors, you've got to have enough light. So lighting is really important, especially with a phone, with an iPhone, is you should expose a bit brighter. Make it a little bit brighter. Use that exposure compensation on this app to make things a little bit brighter. The, the uh, camera on, on an iPhone generally shoots a little bit too dark, I find. So if you increase that brightness a little bit, you'll get those shadows out and it'll end up being a pretty cool photo or save you time later in the edit. The second thing that you need to be very mindful of is the movement. You can probably see behind me um, all these branches and trees moving. Um, if you're trying to take a photo of the leaves on these trees, it's gonna be really hard to do. So what you can do is set up a tripod for your phone, get it in focus and then get the branch of the tree and then move it towards or away from uh, the camera as you're hitting that burst. And you'll get a pretty good result from that. And the last thing you need to be mindful of is the edit. How you're going to edit these photos. You can use Snapseed, and I've done lots of tutorials, and I'll link a couple up here um, about editing with Snapseed, or you can use Lightroom. There's, there's lots of uh, editing programs there that you can use. Um, the thing with editing macro photography work is less is more. Like most photography, less is more. Uh, you'll find that with the macro things, uh, the macro images that you take, the more you edit them, the less they will look good. Hopefully that makes sense. So that's macro photography guys, hope you enjoyed that. Um, heading back down off the hill now, so I'll, uh, oh, whoop, bit of water here. Let's get some quick reflection photos before we sign off. I am always a sucker for a little puddle to get some cool reflection photos. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's try a wide angle lens. So we're getting a bit of the shadow there. Not much we can do about that. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Well guys, that's it. That's macro photography. I hope you enjoyed seeing around Terex and seeing what sort of a pretty, you know, interesting and beautiful place this is. Um, I'm looking to change my three minute Thursdays to a five minute Friday, <laughs> because let's be honest, the three minute Thursdays, they never take three minutes. So let me know what you think. Should I keep it at three minute Thursdays or should I change it to five minute Fridays? You want to see something when you wake up in the morning on Sunday morning and uh, watch it then? Or should I keep it three minute Thursdays? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you then.